Hi friends, today I am continuing playing with some little holiday cards, looking for my eight, let's see, do, do, do. is that an eight? There we go, my eight um, Princeton brush. I've also got my six here, just in case. And of course, as you know, for beginners, if you don't want to invest in the Princeton, you can get this whole Degato set, which is, I want to say, let's see, they're size zero all the way up to maybe a nine or a 10. I see a nine here. So you get this whole set, which I've been real happy with. It's springy, great tips. Um, you can get those on Amazon for, I don't know, maybe $15. Uh, or the Princeton brushes are about $8 and up for those. And I like the Velvet Touch because it just has such a nice feel for the handle. And it's a short handle. I like the short handles with a great tip, of course. Okay, so today I will be using my Winsor Newton, which I don't always um, because it can be a little pricey, but that's okay today. Um, this is going to be a card as a gift, so I want to use um, some nicer paint. So I'll be using, we're going to make some little holly berries, and I'm going to be using my sap green and my olive green and maybe some bright red or magenta, something like that, um, alizarin and crimson. And uh, then I've also got, make sure you have your two wells of water. Of course, I love the meat-in because it won't dump over. If you've had that happen, that's a nightmare. Um, and it's just good quality ceramic. So one to wash my brush and one to rinse. And I've got my palette here, my paper towel, and I think we're ready to go. So the brush strokes I'm going to be using here are, let me just spray my paints by the way, get them kind of activated here. So they're quite hard. Um, I use my tubes to put into my palette and they dry and when I get ready to use them, I just give them a little squirt and they're ready to go. But let me show you the brush strokes that I'm going to be using in this piece it's a very simple piece but let's just practice the brush strokes for a minute just set the card over there so the brush strokes that i'm going to be using are let's see here get all set up um a compound stroke so what a compound stroke is is just going from so here we've got our thin lines we're just barely using the tip of the brush. We're holding it for the most part up and down. And there we go, we have our thin strokes. By the way, I'm leaning my hand on my <clears throat> table here because I don't have a real steady hand, not any medical conditions or anything, I just don't. Then we've got, if we just tilt our brush a little bit, again, resting my hand and a little bit more pressure, I get that thicker stroke. All right, now just to play here, if I was to tilt my brush even more, I would get even a thicker stroke. So what I'm gonna do is for these little holly leaves, I'm going to be using a compound stroke, which what that is, is we're just moving between a thin stroke and I'm holding fairly about the middle of my ferrule here thin and as I keep moving to the right, I'm opening up my brush, creating a thicker line, keep moving and lifting my brush up. So now we've got this compound stroke, which just is a combination of two strokes, a thin and a thick. For our holly berries, we'll be doing something like this, point, press, come up to a point, point, press, come up to a point, and that's pretty much it, guys. That's going to be your holly berry or your um, holly leaves. Point, press, point, press. Make some different size ones is really important, as well as we're going to play with the values. And then, of course, the little um, berries, we'll just use, you know, we'll just create some little circles. All right, so I think we're ready. Let's go ahead and start. 
So I'm just going to do this in the center of my card. I've got some water here and going to pick up some of that sap green and olive green. Sap green is just a little bit brighter. So there we go. Hard to tell on here. And I'm putting just enough water so it moves, but it's not too watery. It's probably about maybe 70% water. Uh, color 30 percent uh, paint we always want to start with our lighter values actually so you could even go a little bit more water with that and then we can add in and build layers and darken so i'm going to create this little stem coming down using the point of my brush just like we practice here so holding your brush upright and very light pressure just to activate that beautiful little tip that's why it's so important to um really maintain and protect that tip in our brushes. So just creating this kind of main branch coming through here and then maybe some little, little stems coming out, something like that. But we'll do more with the leaves. Okay, now I'm gonna go into starting to create some of those actual leaves. I'm going to add a tiny bit more water to this just to lighten it up because again we want to work from a lesser value meaning more water. These are very light value. A darker value would be more paint. Let me show you. That has more pigment in it so it's darker. Our darkest value would be something like this. Point press, which is a lot more uh, paint. So you've got your very light value, kind of your mid value and your dark value. We're going to use our lightest value first. Okay. So we did that. Go ahead and pick up some of that paint. And you can always, if now me, I can tell my brush has a lot of pigment and water in it because it's kind of fat. If you think you have too much, just tap it off and look at that. Some of that water will come off. And now let's go into working from the top down, point, press, and start creating these fun little holly leaves. Point, press, point, press, point, press. Just like that. You can go into that. I'm picking up a little bit brighter green. Point press. And you can point press. Just kind of go over them if you want. Point press. Point press. And let's see. Point press. You can go up or down. You'll kind of find, see for me, going from bottom to top is a little bit harder. So I tend to go from top to bottom, point press, and we'll just keep going with that. I will get you the color of that green that I'm using now. I think it's a Sennelier. I'm probably saying that wrong too, folks. So um, now we want to vary our size of our little holly leaves, point press, point press, just for some interest. Point press and going in. Let's see. Point press. Point press. Point press. Just coming out. We're making it kind of fuller. Point press. Again, practicing on some smaller little leaves of course point press point press point press and i'm going to i feel like we need it to be a little bushier down here point press point press point press 
And look how interesting that's turning out. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that Sennelier. <laughs> I know I'm probably saying that wrong. Somebody will correct me, please. Um, and let's add in some darker point press. Point press. And see how that just immediately, oh boy. That's okay. We're going to leave that. Point press. Just some more smaller leaves here. Point press. So I'm getting some different combinations of colors. You know, choose a few greens. Point press. Point press. And the darker the values, the more they pop out. So we could even go in, and I'm washing my brush a bit, if you can see that. And going to use a very light version, very light value, and put some in the background. Now, I'm not sure if you can even see those, but they're a very faint green and what that does is it makes them look like they're in the back okay point press there we go now i'm going to take this wash and rinse i'm going to take my six long round because i love how long it the bristles are and the point and let's pick up a tiny bit of brown any brown you like there we go i'll list my colors for you and i'm just going to add in a tiny bit here to a few of these just to show some of these branches i love adding brown to my brand to my leaves i think it's so pretty when they blend now, because I waited a little bit longer, they're not quite blending as they might normally, but we've got some in there. And now we're about done, guys. And this is, look at what a cute little card that is. And this is the Strathmore cards, but look how beautiful that is. Let's make some little round berries. <clears throat> Now, if you're using your Mai Lang, this would be your any of your greens, your sap green, your tree green, whatever green that you really like, use that. And I think for my berries, I'm going to use, let's do a little alizarin crimson, or you could do rose matter in your Mai Lang. And let's just add in a few berries here. Just here and there. little bunches and we want to lead our eye through our painting with these fun little berries so i'm using both rose matter um, and a little alizarin crimson for these berries uh, the my lane palette's absolutely perfect this is the Rose Matter. You could use that or any of these berry colors, really. Decide what you kind of like. Love, as you know, I love the My Lang palette for those of you that are beginners and don't want to invest in Winsor Newton. Um, I don't paint with Winsor Newton every day because I can't afford to. And this My Lang palette's really great. I love it a lot. Um, okay, so let's pick up a little more of that. Maybe we'll add a little bunch at the bottom here. Like that. I tend to do everything in threes, but really doesn't have to be that way. You could do more. And we're about done, guys. I might add a little red, um, fun little ribbon at the top. And for right now, I, boy, this is where practicing those brush strokes comes in so handy because I am using a very thin, light touch. 
So practice these warm ups daily, uh, playing with the angle of your brush and playing with um, the pressure and see what you can achieve with those different pressures. So there we go. I think I'll do now a fun little red bow. Just very simple, again, using the tip of my brush. Two C strokes. And maybe something like that. I'm going to keep it pretty simple, not going to get too crazy with that bow. But look at that. We're about done. If I wanted to, um, I could go in and add a couple more dark, dark leaves. Let's see what that looks like. So let me pick up some of that sap green. And boy, look at that, guys. I am really, that is saturated. So that's about 90% pigment 10 percent water and watch this so let's add in a few here point press and that really really pops point press that just comes right out at you point press now it's funny, it's a little bit harder to get as wide of a um, brush stroke because I'm using this six. So therefore I can't get quite as wide. Point, press. So I might even have to go in and thicken it. Uh, let's do this one, point, press, like that. And look how pretty that is. It really gives you this dimension. So I think I'm about done. You can always wash and rinse your brush, tap it off, put it back into its beautiful little point. And then I use these brush rests, which actually my girlfriend makes. Um, I don't know if she makes them all the time. She's the same one that makes my palette here, my custom palette. Um, so I'll, I'll give you that link, but really my go-to palette is also meat and like my water dish. Just love this one. It's got these great big pans for mixing and I can also hold it in my hand and listen to this. That is quality. So that's why I like those meat and products. So there you guys, guys go. I hope you'll give this a try. I think it's so much fun. This could be for November, December. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I could have these little mistletoe or holly hanging up all year, right? Who doesn't like to have a little kiss on the cheek? So anyway, I hope you have fun with that. I will link my brushes. I'll link my, my laying palette. Um, beginners, grab this whole set of brushes under, I believe, under $15.00. And I've been using these for about six, seven months, and they've still got a beautiful tip on them. So if you don't want to just buy the one brush, try those brush, uh, the set of brushes, and you can always also figure out what size you like. I typically go to an eight round, but you may like a different size. And I think that's about it. Thank you so much for your super thanks, your $1.99s. Love them. And it tells me, gives me such great feedback that you're enjoying these little tutorials. And um, it gives me inspiration. So thank you so much. I also save them up and I buy more fun supplies for us all to play with. All right. Happy painting, everybody. I'll see you soon.